Uh, it's probably a 50 cal. So every day, these gun fanatics here, this paranoid Swiss are shooting every day. What are they preparing for, eh? Oh, that looks so clean. We are so clean. So Miss Obama, please, you know, after you rock, and maybe after a nice Christmas at home, send your boys over here and get your tax money back, and Gaddafi's money, and Saddam's, and Hitler's, etc., etc. I mean, Gaddafi wasn't possible. I mean, with these, without these guys here, without these Swiss criminals, the Second World War wasn't possible without these Swiss. They masterminded it. It was all about the banks. What's that? What's that? I only hear the echoes. Probably a hundred guys like shooting at once. And it goes on and on and on. And there's more and more lately. They're really preparing something. Now, here we see some Swiss army barracks of the Swiss mercenaries. Yeah. They say they're neutral, a lot of Humvees, with a special armor, a tank. I'm not getting nearer, because these guys are murderers. You know. And here, we got the sun hieroglyphics of the Pharaohs and of the Templars. So this Templar army, yeah, they uh, prolonged the Second World War with at least two years, they did. There's a big um, Aldi flak and the AA was uh, Swiss made of the Germans, what the Germans had. And um, it was made by Burla Erlikon, so the Erlikon guns. There were, the la there were, during the whole war, there's another army car there. During the whole war, every day there were two train loads full with armament and guns, like 15, maybe 20 wagons behind it, going into Germany every day in the whole war. And with this, the uh, Second World War 
it has been estimated and calculated real thorough it had been prolonged with at least two years yeah and the most dreadful things like happened in the last two years like we think of uh, Auschwitz and uh, so why did they prolong the Swiss Templars why did they prolong the Second World War with two years? Well, here comes the answer. To make Auschwitz possible and the destruction of the Jews, so the Swiss banksters could get the Jewish assets and get rid of a, um, of a chain of power, which they didn't want. After that, they had all the power. Yeah? Yeah. And if we, like, another thing they delivered was all the uh, the ignition um, installation technique um, in the front of a torpedo? It was all Swiss made. I don't re I don't remember the company. I think it was in the uh, in the French speaking part of Switzerland. Even I had the name somewhere. So they made enormous suffering possible there on this side as well like the sinking of the Lanconia on September the 12th in 1942 uh, which we can see that the um, the captain of the U-boat Mr. Hartenstein who was a um, who was really a gentleman apparently he took uh, especially the children and the women and lots of other people then he contacted the, the Red Cross the Allies the British command they said well we're not going to do anything and then finally, the Americans, the, US, the USAF, they bombed, especially the, um, the refugees or the, uh, the shipwrecked. They bombed the women and the children, though they could see it very clearly. Why? So here's the answer. Because the Europeans were getting along very, very well. The Germans in the ship, they behaved like real gentlemen. They gave coffee and food and blankets. Uh, medical help they got along very well with the English and the Italians so here among each other the Europeans got very well along with each other and this is what the enemy within the third power or the third Reich the Pharaohs and the Freemasons they didn't want they wanted the Europeans to kill each other to raise hatred but the incident of the Laconia proves that the Europeans, they got, a well, they got along swell together, real nice, peaceful, tired of the war, all of them. And the British and the American command uh, gave the order to bomb the hell out of them, to kill children again and women, you know, that's what they always do. Yeah. You know, the Swiss, they don't have a heart. At the place where they should have the heart, they got a little calculator, which can calculate which is of more advantage and which is of less advantage with their neutrality swindle. These are the biggest murderers. So why, Mr. Obama, why do you go in Afghanistan and Iraq? Why don't you invade Switzerland, the criminal and racist state of Switzerland, and get your tax money back? Your own US tax money. It's here. That's all for now. Yeah. Armies are there. So the people fight each other and they all die. And then the, uh, the enemy within can take all the power. This is pharaonic. Uh, one Reich, one empire, is like Germany fights another empire, like Russia. And then the third empire, the enemy within, or the third Reich, they take all the power afterwards. You know, the men are all dead, so they take the country, the land, the cattle, the power, and the women. That's how they do it. So wars are just there to play people out against each other. Wars are human beings against human beings. Then there is another army, the police, 
which is a worldwide army against the people. So, you know, to control them and to terrorize them who are left uh, are being um, fought like uh, by, the, uh, by the world army, the police. And we can see that two policemen from two different countries, they get better along with each other than you and the policemen of your country, you know. So, the Swiss army, the mercenaries, you know, they just take orders. It's a stupid thing anyway, taking orders. Who could think of a stupid thing like that? So this winter 2012, you know. The police, you know, they are like a real army. They're having helicopters, infrared material, uh, guns, machine guns. They're training every day how to kill a human being, you know. <laughs> they're getting more and more powerful. They're getting, especially here in Switzerland, they're getting more and more violent and criminal. They're lying things together, you know, to put foreigners in prison. Uh, oh, we just end up into slavery, you know. So who's that? It's a sergeant, or what? This gun. In Switzerland, every man has his uh, assault rifle at home, a Zig. Uh, at home, you, you imagine with bullets and everything. This is a mercenary army, a mercenary tradition. They all take the thing at home, you know. Can you imagine, you know, like an M16, like a fully automatic. Uh, Swiss mercenaries. Okay. So there's the all-seeing eye. The all-seeing eye. The police eye. Here is the obelisks. With the sun hieroglyph, here we see it again, eh? Something in the middle. I don't know what that is. And it has the um, the joining, Freemasonry joining, and the uh, the world domination. And this is where they dominate the world, where they made the. Uh, this is the Swiss Parliament from the other side with all the Nazi gold on top here, all the Swiss gold. And, uh, yeah, look at the gold they have, eh? And where it's green, it's copper. So the, the gold, the gold is no copper, right? So, this is the, um, the UBS, the United Banksters of Switzerland or Usama Bank Switzerlanden, you know, and um, on the other side we've got the obelisk there, which I showed before, and that was the all-seeing eye. Oh, never mind. And uh, there's the, the Parliament, or the Bundeshaus where they have the covenant, the Bund. So, the, um, these guys here, they're the ones who attract very rich people from all over the world in a uh, tax, tax evasion haven like Switzerland. So they don't pay any more taxes at home, but tax, taxes have to be paid, right? And all the taxes are going to be on the back of the poor people. Well, I mean, the rich never paid the taxes anyway. Look at the noblemen and the kings. I mean, they took the taxes, didn't they? So it's quite logical that the rich people, they are not paying, paying any taxes. And um, the Swiss banks, they were made by the Templars. And uh, the temp uh, they founded the, the Swiss banks and Switzerland in 1291. Uh, the last of the... Uh, 
of the Crusades took place in 1291 and uh, Aachen, Saint Jean d'Arc in French, was uh, the last stronghold of the Templars which fell on uh, May 18, 1291. So only two and a half months later, the time to get back on horseback and uh, on foot. In those days, they founded Switzerland on uh, August 1st, 1291. So it's without any doubt that the Templars' treasure went to Switzerland, right? And you would be astonished all about all the things you'd find in the Swiss caves and in the Swiss banks, you know, about uh, uh, the last 5,000 years uh, of human history. Yeah, so the UBS. Uh, they are right near to the parliament, of course, here. Uh, where the gangsters are, the banksters. And they are ruling the parliament. <laughs> okay, well, watch the Pharaoh show for more. Allez voir le show Pharaoh, le Pharaoh show, si vous voulez savoir de plus. Uh, schauen Sie die Pharaon Show, wenn Sie mehr wissen wollen. As we see here, the bank, the United Banksters of Switzerland Bank, has uh, three keys. Does that remind anybody of something? Well, the Vatican has two keys. Oh, well, they probably have, to have something to do with each other. Well, I mean, they are the, uh, the Swiss Guard in the Vatican, who have a museum in a town called Zion in Switzerland, and of course there were the Templars, you know, who had to do any, some things with the Vatican as well. So that explains the three keys at the bank and the two keys of the Vatican. So you guys go in search where are the four keys or the one key okay well think it over oh, here's the whole parliament from the other side it's Isis the Swiss witch and uh, another time Isis with a sword That's Babylon. And on top here, three times Isis, the Swiss witch. And the gold. And um, well, let's film them back. Hello, they're probably looking. So this one is on the parliament. And that one is looking around. And here we got the joining there. Yeah. Yeah. Probably looking. What is he filming? No. So, um, big brother, you all seeing eye. Right. And another bank. It's full of banks here. Where the parliament is, another bank. That was the UBS, as we saw before. There again. And again. Another bank. Alien bank. There. The bank there. Credit Suisse. Oh. I <laughs> mean... Without any question, who's giving the orders here? Well, I just showed it to you. Here it says 1291 when the when Switzerland started with the joining underneath. There it says this is the uh, the sun hieroglyph all around. So there it says, hey, eh? 1291, as I told you. Parliament. Bloody gangsters they are. So today is August 1st, 2011. 
a couple of days ago in this newspaper it's called 20 minutes uh, it was in the newspaper that a um, a uh, genetic analysis uh, company analysis company sorry which is called iGenia in Zurich they had the uh, the uh, Swiss um, genetic uh, pool run through their systems and compare them with the pharaohs and uh, it came out that each second Swiss has a uh, pharaonic genetics so you know this is what I've been saying for a very long time and in my film the pharaoh show uh, these people they are not Europeans they may they might look like Europeans but they certainly don't behave like Europeans and um, I already knew for a very long time that the um, their, uh, um, their uh, skull form the form of their skulls is um, very pharaonic it's called uh, dolicocephalic and there's a very high concentration of this in uh, all over Switzerland and the um, um, for the rest of Europe Central Europe there's a, a, a brachycephalic uh, skull form which is more round and the Swiss definitely have the uh, the long shaped headed um, pharaonic uh, skulls they do and in every war they were not there not in the first world war not in the second world war which they financed through the banking system uh, not in the 30 year war from 1618 to 1648 which was the worst of all european wars all all towns disappeared of the face of the earth uh, and these swiss mercenaries which are still you know what's left of them you know uh, in the uh, defending like the Vatican the um, the Vatican's guard they're all Swiss yeah. and they kill millions of Germans and in Alsace in uh, France and in uh, they, there they kill 95 percent of the population and in the south of Germany it was the same thing so the Swiss Germans they massively settled down in the south of Germany where the Nazis started off their whole thing you know, in Munich and in Nuremberg and in um, they settled down in Elsass and, all, and elsewhere you know taking over infiltrating and taking over the, uh, the, the, the construction of power <laughs> in an entire country and um, yeah there was the uh, the Swiss mercenaries and uh, today is August 1st and this is their national holiday and we were, I already told you that uh, two and a half months later after um, May 18th um, 1291 when Ecken fell they, um, they founded Switzerland on August 1st and ever since they um, they kept this date as a, uh, a national holiday uh, for later on I'm going to uh, film the um, which I already did in the German and the French version I'm going to film the uh, the stakes where they uh, symbolically um, are still celebrating the murder on the Europeans and their children and they still do it on today's day until today's day of course it was also these uh, Swiss Templars that murdered the Jewish population in Europe in the Holocaust and um, yeah because they had too many bank accounts you know on these uh, the Swiss bankster uh, Templar bankings you know yeah so um, and of course the Swiss Templars and the Swiss mercenaries they always had to come back uh, you know when the uh, when the harvest started roughly the harvest started and that was uh, roughly around uh, August 1st every year and it lasted for about two months 
and um, there weren't any tractors in these days or any uh, mechanical equipment so um, everybody had to uh, help out and everybody was a farmer in these days so these Swiss mercenaries they came back on horseback and they stole a lot of horses in Germany and in France yeah we all heard it that's a national holiday so that's fireworks firecrackers we're gonna see some more of it later on that's like um, Le 14 juillet in France or uh, July 4th in America. Well, they got August 1st, and which is based on an entirely different, uh, well, maybe not even. Uh, probably the same reasons. Freemasons, you know, created or founded a country like uh, after the revolution in France or in, in the Americas. Yeah. And uh, well, okay, so that was uh, August 1st, and then they came back, these Swiss mercenaries loaded with, uh, with looting goods, and they shot in the air with a, a musket, like you know, like kadoom, you know. And everybody came down rushing from the mountains and the fields where they were working and the forests, and they celebrated the murder of the Europeans and their children, which they do until today, which we will see later on. Yeah, so actually it was me who gave the, uh, the information about the uh, pharaonic concentration in Switzerland to these DNA testers in uh, Zurich. They, so they ran it through and 50% uh, of the Swiss Germans, they are of pure pharaonic blood. That explains that they're sucking out the US economy and they're sucking out the German economy and uh, they are the reason for the um, the economic collapse in Greece and in Spain because they're attracting very rich people all over the world from all over the world who are not going to with big factories and all that and they're not going to pay any more taxes in their own countries and taxes have to be paid and it's all going to be on the backs of poor people making poor people poorer and rich richer and this is what these um, uh, these uh, Swiss criminals are doing. They are not Europeans. I proved it historically in the Pharaoh show, and I proved it, and it's been proven a couple of days ago genetically. The Swiss are no Europeans. They are full blood, full blood Pharaohs. This is the basis, the Al Qaeda of the Pharaohs, with which they took over the whole world and uh, well the Templars founded Switzerland which I proved historically and uh, out of the Templars came the um, the Freemasons and uh, the Templars were the first banks in Europe and of course they uh, with the, uh, the the Templars treasure uh, the Swiss banks were founded yeah so and um, which we're going to see later on when they're going to uh, to burn the stakes, you know, where they are also uh, symbolically uh, celebrating the murdering of um, of the good women of Europe who didn't want to uh, collaborate against their man and stab them in their backs by collaborating with the witches of Isis, the sisters of Isis. So um, it was the witches who burned the good women and this is what they still celebrate it here which I'm going to show later on at 9.30 this evening they're going to do it I'm going, well we're going then and film a little bit earlier and actually it was also a Swiss idea about burning the women in all over Europe which the Swiss mercenaries uh, did and it was a Swiss idea there were two Swiss, one was called Heinrich Kramer and the other one was called Jacobe Sprenger and they wrote the witch's hammer in Latin uh, the Maleus Maleficarum and there was the handbook how to torture women, how to burn them at the stakes, how to tie them up and, uh, and the rest this country is evil I mean uh, we should send the SAS and the SEALs and the Rangers and the Marines we should send them here instead of Libya uh, another thing, I uh, maybe you saw my um, contribution, like uh, the uh, at the Bilderberg conference. And uh, what does the name Bilderberg mean? 
apparently it's from a hotel in Holland. So there's there's a country where there are no bergs, which means mountains in the Germanic languages like German. So the name Berg is not it can't be touched because it's all flat. It's all flat and now like a fucking pancake it is, the old country. It's beneath the sea level actually, half of it. And uh, so then the name Bilder. The name Bilder is German and it means a, um, a photograph or a, uh, a painting. So what is this Bilderberg? So it means a mountains of paintings or mountains of photographs. In Auschwitz, I talked to a, uh, a, a former SS in Elsass and he told me he was, uh, that was in 2003, the bloke was 84 years and he got severely wounded on the East Front fighting the Russians and um, so he couldn't fight anymore. Uh, he had uh, grenade, split, grenade splitters all over his body and all things like that. So they um, they put him in Auschwitz doing uh, like doing guard like with the SS. He was a member already a member of the SS actually. He told me actually that uh, he knew that his uh, ancestors came 350 years ago from Switzerland and actually in this part of France they speak like Swiss German as in um, as in Switzerland they do. You know the first language is Swiss German and not even French. The Alsatians, they don't like the French and they don't like the German either because they're bloody Swiss. And this bloke told me that they had uh, the guys who had to sort out all the, all the materials we were left over of all the people they murdered. Um, like they had mountains of glasses. They had mountains of hair. They had mountains of teeth and they had mountains of shoes, you know. And the guys who, and then they also had mountains of photographs of all the lives taken away, of all the, of a, as a memory of of, uh, of what what was left of Europe. So mountains of pictures, and this, if you translate this in German, you get the name Bilderberger. So the name Bilderberger is symbolically a name, and very cynically for the um, destruction of Europe and as a memory, a very cynical memory of what Europe used to be like when it was still sort of free before the New World Order which started off actually in 1945, it really started off you know, there's one empire fighting a second empire one Reich, Germany fights the second Reich Russia and the third Reich, you know, the enemy within the third party takes it all the land, the power, the cattle, and this is how they do it. It's quite simple actually. And um, yeah, so they call them already there, you know, the people didn't have a name anymore. They were all just skeletons and they, um, they had a number, but who, who knows a number, you know, you know like with, with, with five or six numbers on it. Who knows the number or more? Uh, so they call them uh, well, they gave him a name very cynically. They, they said, well, these guys were sorting out all these mountains and, and putting all the gear of all these dead people, you know, mountains of glasses and mountains of hair and mountains of shoes. We call them the, the, uh, the, the uh, picture mountains, the Bilder, Burger, Bilder, picture, and Berg is a mountain. And this Prince Bernard, who was a Tsar, you know, a, a, a Pharaonic king. He was a, um, he came from the, uh, nobi the, the uh, German nobility. And as we know, the Queen of, uh, of Holland, his daughter, uh, attends every Bilderberg conference. And she was there at the St. Moritz conference as well. You know, the apple doesn't fall far away from the tree, you see. So, um, yeah, and this bloke, he even was in the SS actually, and um, and then he did sort of being on the other side, and he spent the whole war in England, like doing like, well, we are victims of the whole thing, yeah, 
and this guy he uh, set up the Bilderbergs after the war which is actually a thing which exists already like thousands of years but under other names they, they change names through history they change jackets they change collars they change flags and false false flags etc and Switzerland is their biggest base actually so uh, he called of course this hotel with the German name in a country where there are no mountains he called this place Bilderberg and of course uh, it was his hotel it belonged to them I mean he was the only German around you know so uh, no no Dutchman will call it uh, Bilderberg because it's two entirely n non Dutch names actually I'm South African and I understand Afrikaans and I know which is like old Dutch and I know there's no um, there's no names of this tie like in Afrikaans yeah so okay I'll give you a closer look at the link of this um, of this uh, article which was in the in the newspaper 20 minutes uh, a couple of days ago it was on um, on July 28th and maybe uh, it came in the next day because um, this is online and it says 2250 in the night yeah. so there we go I zoom in oh I just yeah okay just a minute I'll be back okay there we are so this is the text here so anybody who reads German can read it I have to do it like this because I'm a I'm a complete you know know how no nobody with the with the internet I'm the older like you know, it's not my generation who grew up with it so this is the link here this is the link in German so anybody can take it out you know it says uh, yeah every second Swiss has the uh, Faro uh, genetics so this is uh, the uh, Tutankhamun King Tut and here it says uh, she wrote the article and it was actually me who gave the information in the first place to these uh, DNA testers uh, they did a good job you see July 28th and uh, yeah and this is the name of the newspaper it's called 20 minutes I think it's uh, originally Swedish as far as I heard there is again the link so there's the article anybody who wants to read it okay so I'll make a quick break and uh, I think it's about seven o'clock now and later on so 1900 hours later on I'm going to um, I'm going to film how the Swiss celebrate the murder of the Europeans and their children and how they put women on the stakes they're gonna burn a very very large stake and actually this is only a little village and they do it in every little village and in the big towns the stakes are even bigger and they celebrate with beer and wine and uh, as these people are still you know like uh, financing wars all over right okay so this is where the offspring of King Tut lives in the bays at their bases well this is uh, Switzerland all right so this is where they shoot they got their shooting range here every week they shoot in every village they're preparing in every village so this is where they shoot from in this village which is called Berisville it's next to uh, next to Bern so here they're celebrating the murder on the Europeans and their kids 
this is the stake, they're gonna burn it. You see? I'm going a bit nearer maybe from the other side. It's very dangerous to get nearer with all the uh, the murder threats I'm having of these uh, very dangerous people, very organized, highly organized. So I'm trying to get nearer. I hope they're not, uh, well, I don't give a fuck. Just look how they're looking. Look how they're looking. Look at it. The criminals. Look at it. Now yeah, they're staring them. So here they're celebrating the murder on the Europeans. This is Middle Ages. There's some guards all over. Look how he's staring. Look at it. Look how mean he looks. Before they were all staring. Look at it. Oh man. Look at that looking. Especially if you turn around, then they start looking. Look. Look. Especially if you turn around. Then they start looking at you. So this is the stake. Here they symbolically burn the Europeans. Now they suck out their countries economically. And of course the tree is symbolic. Oh, a phallic symbol, they're obelisk. And one of those two Swiss are pharaohs. Why well, they leave the branches on on top. Wow, are they shooting at me? Oh, look, I'm shaking, look. And remember that burning the witches was a Swiss idea. The witch's hammer was written by two Swiss. So there it is from the other side. There they are, these criminals. There they are. Sucking out the US economy through their banking system. They're still watching. Both of them, look at it. Look at it. It's like taxes. Yeah. And they suck out Germany's economy. They destabilized. Spain and Greece economically, economically. So here they are. These are the ones that did it. And they did 9-11, folks. They did it. They destabilized the Arab economic world throughout the American attacks, attacks on the Arab world. And they got an enormous profit out of it. I mean, just see it. Look at it. I mean, uh, the banking collapse was after 9-11. It's, it's a direct result of it. Yeah, so there they are. They're celebrating the murder of the Europeans and their children. And later on they're going to burn, they're going to light up the stake. Before was the national anthem. I missed it. Thank God. And, uh, yeah. So they're going to light it soon. And they know what they are celebrating. They definitely know it. In this country, people are being, foreigners are being portrayed as black sheep, black rats. Uh, yeah, snakes and, and black monkeys, etc. They're very, very racist. It's the same thing we could see in the 30th in Germany with the with what they did with the Jewish people and uh, the Hebrew people. And in 2001, there were five Nazis that forced themselves into the house where we were, and they said, "I shouldn't do anything against Switzerland anymore. Don't write any more newspapers uh, articles in the newspapers, but you sh I should write against the Jewish people." I don't have any problem with Jewish people. I have some Jewish friends even, Mr. Zilberman in Geneva. And they said, if you don't, you're never gonna see your child, your son anymore. So then they kidnapped him in 2001. I never saw him again. I don't know if he's alive. My son, Myron, Myron. Uh, I don't think he's alive anymore. And uh, yeah.
So they said, you're never going to see your son anymore unless you write against the Hebrew people, against the Jews. Then I asked for help. The Jewish community, nobody helped. Well, I understand it, you know, these people have so many worries, they, they have no time to help, you know. Well, well they're, they're going to light it. 1st of August in Switzerland, two and a half months after the, uh, the fall of uh, Aachen. Here they are, the Templars, the Crusaders. And they're burning the European women, the witches. Actually, the witches are burning the good women. And they burned the Jews as well. They financed it with the Swiss banks. And they financed the burning of the witches. They financed the destruction of the Europeans. And they were not in the 30-year war, and they were not in the First World War, they were not in the Second World War. None of them. And now they're going to booze and celebrate. Through invisible means with their Swiss banks, they suck out the US economy. The mother of all evil, the sisters of Isis. Um, boy, are they racist. I mean, look at it, the Americans, where did they come from? You know, the settlers. Uh, it's just a shift of power. You have to look first, who financed and who did all the wars in Europe they were the Swiss Templars and the their mercenaries so of course it's them who already had all the power in Europe who created the US and took over all the power in the US I mean, look at Europe first, and then you understand who's having all the power in America. And look at the Windsors, I mean, the whole world, all the, the nobility and the, uh, the whole world is having all their money here, all the pharaohs, all the kings, all the drug dealers, and they all celebrate, they, you know, they all go skiing in Switzerland in St. Moritz and Stadt and you know, the rulers of the world. And this is where the people in a small village and they do it now in all villages in Switzerland. Thousands of villages, they're symbolically burning the Europeans what they actually did and they burned the Jews as well. They like burning they like burning. Oh man, look at it. This is Auschwitz, man. Look at it. This is Auschwitz. I mean, where else do they do this? This is Switzerland. And look at it now, how racist they are, you know. And, and they try to, uh, to light the fire, the racist fire all over Europe. Because the Swiss are the heroes now, you know, with their initiatives, you know, their, their sort of... So, the Swiss flag, this is in Bern. The joining. Important hotel, next to the... Swiss Parliament, there it is. That's Isis all over. Well, that's not, obviously.
the world in their hand. This is where they dominate the world, yeah? All the Swiss cantons here. Weird stuff, eh? And, uh, yeah. So, here in Bern, this is the Aare, the river which is finally going into the uh, into the Rhine so another another time the joining there Acacia it's all gold I suppose it's real gold they've got lots of it and this is not a Christian cross this is the Swiss cross the Templars cross it is yeah and on the other side as well it's all gold and the joining, the Freemasonry joining. Yeah. Yeah, so here we are again. The Swiss Parliament in Bern. This is where they masterminded the Holocaust. This is where they mastermind the domination of the world. Uh, the sucking out of the US economy by Swiss banks um, all the dictators they have the money on the on the banks you know the USB like the United Swiss banksters or I can also call them USA Usama Bank Switzerland Um, yeah, I mean, Gaddafi couldn't be Gaddafi, he couldn't do his things without the Swiss banks and without Switzerland. The same thing for uh, Saddam Hussein, Adolf Hitler, uh, Mubarak and all the other dictators. They had billions and billions here in Switzerland with which they bought the arms and uh, to control the people. Some people talk about, about uh, Gaddafi like uh, he was a good person. For the others, he was very, very bad. How is this possible? Well, I tell you why. This is what dictators always do. They give one part of the population everything, good health care. They put them like in the military, in the police, you know, give them everything, education, schools, university. And the other part is being terrorized. So by this difference, it's much easier to rule, you know, by divide and rule. Divide et impera. Uh, Mr. Hitler did the same thing. The English always did this in the colonies, you know, to just create a difference within a people and then set them up and play them out against each other. So this is why some people say, well, Gaddafi was a swell guy. He brought water and, you know, he gave oil, health care free health care and for the others he was a beast and this is uh, run your Swiss criminal okay we'll get you yeah <laughs> yeah so I want to say you know this is where the Nazis are in the in the Swiss Parliament and I want to say to all to all the other Nazis around you know it's it's, it's really uh, it, it's getting more and more if you look at YouTube if you look at the internet it's more and more and they pretend to be the protectors of a white Europe so wait a minute the protectors of a white Europe didn't the Nazis bomb white Europe into a hell like you know uh, neutral countries like Belgium uh, Luxembourg Holland, Denmark, Norway, um, Czechoslovakia, Poland. Then they bomb uh, with the, the Condor Legion, uh, Spain, uh, Guernica, the Basque people who are white as well. Bombs, you know, German Nazi bombs on white children's rooms. Why did they do it? Uh, they, I mean, Uradur sur Glane, they killed uh, hundreds of people there. 
they terrorized the white population of the whole of Europe. They put them in concentration camps. Uh, they, they, they bombed Warsaw to hell. I mean, what did the Luxembourg people do to deserve this? What did the Polish people do to deserve this? The Danish, the Norwegians, the Ouijis, yeah? uh, the Basque people, the Spanish people, the, the Dutch, the, the Belgians. What did they do to deserve it? They, they, they never did anything against Germany and Switzerland. Nothing. Not even a bad word. They didn't bomb Dresden or, or, or Hamburg or Berlin. No. These were neutral peop uh, countries. And uh, so, what did they do? What did they do to deserve this? You Nazis, what, why, why did you stab Europe in the back? Did she deserve it? You stabbed her in the back again and again and again. So, in 1945, she couldn't defend herself anymore against mass immigration. So don't listen to the Swiss Nazi party, the SVP, who says we want to stop mass immigration. Well, they did it. I mean, the Swiss banks, they, they, they collaborated with Mr. Hitler and they stabbed Europe. They stabbed her in the back and again and again and again. So she couldn't defend herself anymore. So the Nazis and the SVP are not the defenders of a white Europe. They destroyed the white Europe. So cut out the theater, you know, to see the truth. You de destroyed the white Europe. Why did you drop bombs on white European children's rooms? Why did you do this? Why do you hate Europe so much? You are not the defenders of Europe. And the neo-Nazis on the YouTube, you are not the defenders of Europe. You destroyed Europe. And I want to know why. Well, the answer, you're looking at the answer, why? The Swiss masterminded the Second World War because there were so many people who had lots of money, millions, billions here on Swiss banks and they wanted to get it. So why, how do you get it? Why well, you kill them? So they don't come, up, come again and pick up the money. They murdered the Jews. That, that, this is the reason for which they murdered the Jews, actually. The Swiss. There's a Latin saying, you know, it's fecit cui prodes. It means the one who profits, he did it. Well, they did it, and they did 9/11 as well for the same, the same old Swiss reasons. And you can see this, you know, uh, the First World War, the Second World War. By miracle, the Swiss were not in it, you know. We already have to put a question mark here. The Thirty Year War. Well, they were not in it either. And that was from 1618 to 1648. And, um, but they were in it, like uh, uh, over 100,000 Swiss mercenaries, they murdered and killed uh, hundred, uh, millions of Germans. Whole towns disappeared, especially in Alsace. You know, 95% of the population 95% of the population was uh, exterminated and then the Swiss um, mercenaries, they, they told their fellow countrymen in the Berner Oberland and they all came down to Elsass and uh, um, so that was from 1618 to 1648 and actually this is the reason why the Alsatians they don't like the Germans and they don't like the French, well they're Swiss and uh, like in Mulhouse, they even talk with a uh, like a, like in like in Basel, they talk Swiss German. They are the Alemannic people. Actually, there are two German dialects in France, in uh, Lorraine, Lothringen. They talk Frankish, a Frank dialect of the Frank people, like France. The, the, the name France is, it comes from the Frank people, actually. And in Alsace, they, um, they talk Alemannic, as in Switzerland. And uh, so after the Thirty Year War, whole towns disappeared. And uh, then the Swiss, they occupied the south of Germany as well. 
And this is how they infiltrated Germany, and that was the end of Germany. Uh, actually, the Germans were saved by the, uh, by the Dutch, because the Dutch, they sank the whole, uh, the, the Spanish Armadas, who brought gold from the Incas and the Maya, so they couldn't um, pay out the, uh, the mercenaries anymore, and that was the end of the, uh, the Thirty Year War. And four years later, this is how, four years later, my country, South Africa, could be founded in 1652 with uh, Jan van Riebeek. So, um, yeah, this is all a result. And then the Germans, they were not so uh, thankful later on in 1940 when they bombed Rotterdam and they, uh, thousands of children died, you know. And they bombed Warsaw and they bombed Coventry and they bombed London, they bombed Antwerp. Uh, Madrid in the 30s, you know, why did you do this? And then the Swiss mercenaries, after the 30-year war, they took over, they infiltrated the south of Germany. Listen carefully. And this is the reason why Nazism, it came from the south of Germany, from Nuremberg, from München, from Munich. The Berlin people, uh, ich bin ein Berliner, they were against Hitler, but they didn't have a chance, you know. It all came from the south. As it is coming from the south now, from Switzerland, all the uh, anti-Semitic and racist things uh, on YouTube and on the internet. And we got names here in Switzerland of um, revisionist people, Holocaust deniers. We got the names and the addresses. So please, somebody contact me, so we can get, we can get them. It's all coming from Switzerland, and the SVP are the heroes now, because they have such a success with, with this parliament here. Well, I tell you, the devil is living here. Well, that's for sure. And with this place here, they destroyed Europe, and now they pretend to be the defenders of Europe. Well, they're not. They destroyed Europe for good and I think it's for good yeah um, yeah like the name in French you call Alsace it's called Alsace and the name Alsace it's um, it's coming from the word Al Suisse so uh, les Alsuissiens it means all Switzerland Al Suisse <laughs> they are from Switzerland and they had hundreds of thou thousand in the SS I think two or three hundred thousand Alsatians were in the SS murdering and in Auschwitz I, I even met a bloke he was from Alsace uh, in 2003 he was 84 years and he said he was in uh, he was in the SS in Auschwitz and he told me it really all happened and I believe him I know how the Swiss are and he told me like 350 years ago, his ancestors came from Switzerland. And I met more people, even in the north of Alsace. Uh, yeah. So. So, yeah, I mean, the destruction of Europe. They can't blame it on the niggers or on the Muslims because because there were not there weren't any. I mean, uh, there was a time when there were no. It was all white. So um, first of all, we have to say that the whites destroyed the whites. The whites destroyed Europe. And then we have to conclude which whites. Well, you're looking at them. And um, so, I mean, SVP, Nazi party, don't, play, don't blame the niggers on the Muslim on this. The Swiss always blame the others for things they did, you know. They always do this, like... Uh, yeah, so now... Um, there's a lot of good people on the internet who, 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 who have a lot of questions and they need a lot of answers. 
and they call themselves info warriors but with this sick uh, Nazi propaganda in a very smart way under the surface which is being introduced from out of Switzerland from very very clever people in here as well and from the Nazi SVP party uh, they, they give these people answers which are not, not true and this is the way that um, um, good people who are info warriors are being um, are being turned around into Nazis, and I'll give you the reason for this as well. Uh, so please, Mr. Obama, after Iraq, and after after your boys having Christmas, please send them over here and get your tax money back and Obama and uh, Gaddafi's money and Adolf's money as well as you're over here already and uh, well take Saddam's as well so um, yeah and they, and they, they call it here the uh, the Swiss Parliament or the Bundeshaus the Bund it means the uh, the covenant or the pact you know uh, the Templar's Covenant. This is the Bund. What do you want? Um, so here all the laws against foreigners and all the racist laws are being made here in the Parliament. Yeah, yeah so now I'm going to tell you why and how these very smart Swiss so don't underestimate them when they're smiling through their teeth to you how they do it how they turn around people in the internet how they turn them into Nazis and they do it I'll tell you thousands it's really it, it, it's hard to believe but there are thousands of good people info warriors who are looking for questions and for honesty for all the crimes which are being done you know in history throughout history and um, yeah, I'm gonna tell you why. The um, in here in Switzerland, they never had uh, um, uh, freedom of speech. This is uh, one of the oldest dictatorships in the world, and they're very smart. You know, like in a chess play, you should think like ten moves ahead. And sometimes by uh, by making a law which seems to be uh, in favour of a uh, of a humane thing, well, it isn't. If you look like ten moves ahead, it comes out something else. So I'm going to tell you why and how they do this. So because of the real Nazis that are here in the Parliament, you know, and they need young, normal, and neutral people to become this as well. Run you Swiss criminal. Excuse me guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay, when freedom of speech costs you freedom. They always want to listen. Europe, the US and the international community should call a halt to the success duo Switzerland-Germany immediately before these two will sink Europe once again into war, racism and anti-semitism. Anti Liberty of speech should be reinstalled as fast as possible in these two countries. Because as a matter of fact, the justice departments of both countries contribute most to racism. The end and the destruction of the freedom of expression confirm young nationalists and older Nazis of these circles in their convictions that it is a certain ethnical minority that has all the all powers in the world that even in their own country they can bend the furs of human rights into their own advantage and having all powers to have eradicated freedom of speech by extreme cunning ways and means both countries try to follow their old perspective and this time by delegating their justice departments within the framework of a devilish tactics with unrevealed strategical objectives 
as comparative and parallel to it, a bad chess player only thinks one move ahead and thus loses. So sly heads of these two criminal nations think ten moves ahead in the deep. And deep it is, while showing the international community, please look how our justice department act against Nazis and racism and put anybody who dares to open his mouth about it for a long time in prison. Well, deceptive appearance it is, while the real man of the concept and well hidden behind the screens laugh and celebrate how stupid and good believing Europe and the world are. The justice authorities of both these countries are to be sued and put in front of an international court because these countries again and in such a concealed way augment racism, hatred between peoples and anti-Semitism and are momentarily responsible for considering growth rates of nationalist memberships. It goes around like a scorching fire. Look how much power they have, even the liberty of speech, these pigs have taken us while corrupting our human rights and thus youngsters massively are being driven into the arms of Nazi parties. Consciously, Nazis in the justice departments of both countries are thus recruiting the next generation through the best of all publicity by offering this ultimate proof, motive and total hatred for the next goddamn holocaust. One part of the population becomes a convinced Nazi by this sly strategy of the justice authorities Nazis while the population's rest at least thinks the whole thing to be highly suspect that an ethnic minority can influence so much creating the seeds and potential for more weren't human rights and the liberty of speech conceived because people get very angry when thrown in the slammer only for saying things that others who dictate put under punishment do we want them to prepare more misery in all secrecy and give them their martyrs in prison because, in spite of the liberty of speech? And this is what the Nazis of the Justice Departments of Switzerland and Germany are very well aware of. And the four Nazis welcome consequences. All are getting part of it and being drawn in under pretext of stopping a handful but that in reality from a few will rise another SS skull division once more. This is exactly what these justice departments, Nazis of both these criminal nations fully aware. Get out of here. They always want to listen. Or go away. They always want to listen. Or where are I? These criminal nations, fully aware, are aiming... Oh yeah, the SS Coal Division once more. This is exactly what these Justice Department's Nazis of both these criminal nations, fully aware, are aiming at to establish. Any fool understands the impact and the consequences of what is happening. Again, Europe and the rest of the world, please open up your eyes before it's too late again and immediately stop these two criminal peoples. I know what I'm talking about because me and my family are victims of anti-Semitism without even taking part of this specific affiliation. My son Myron has been kidnapped since, eight, since 11 years by the Swiss Nazis of, a, of the jurisdictional authorities in order to blackmail me to function as a spokesman to express these horrible political issues forbidden by law through abolition or rather abrogation of the liberty of expression. Personally, I do believe that the Holocaust has taken place and the sad stories of Anne Frank, Primo Levi and Egon Kogon are true. Without second thought, I believe German with the Swiss behind the curtains are quite capable of executing such Uh, such atrocities against mankind in a thorough way through industrialized means. Swiss cunningness together with German ruthlessness. I do know them by now, but I won't drop a father's love and hope to see his child again. Yeah. So my name is Sean Ross. I'm South African. And um, by the abolition of the freedom of speech, uh, 
um, they directly, or rather indirectly, made the most anti-Semitic laws you can imagine, again. Because a lot of people say, well, if I say something here against another race or another people and I get into prison for this, then this ethnic minority must have all the control in the world and have a lot of power. So like three, four, five, six moves ahead, this will give automatically an enormous uh, growth of uh, young people going into Nazism. And this is what we can see today. And it's so hidden because of this, because it's forbidden to talk. And uh, so please somebody do something because it's getting very, very, very bad. Uh, they're not showing it, you know, like before, like in the 30s with their arms up, you know, and, and in uniforms, they don't show it, but <laughs> it's very bad. It's very bad. And this is, the, this is the center of Nazism you're looking at. So please, Mr. Obama, send the GIs and send the Marines in. And send the SES as well. Who cares, wins. Not dares, but cares this time. So please, somebody help and somebody do something. They're always listening. Okay, bye bye for now. So, this is the lodge again here in uh, Tolikova in Switzerland. And the number 116, apparently, it's all over at all the, uh, at all the lodges. And like if you turn it around, uh, well, like if you turn it around, you'll get. Yeah, well, this is the lodge here in Switzerland. If you turn it around, the number 116, well, you get this here. And um, so why 116? Apparently, um, apparently many lodges are on the number 116. Well, I'll tell you why. Because that's the date 1160, and I was in the middle of the Crusades. And what happened 1160? Um, the most important Templar got born. His name was Simon de Montfort. And what does it mean, Montfort? It means strong mountain. And where's the strong mountain? Well, it's here in Switzerland. And the one that's missing here, Le Neuf Sur, which they took away because of me, mm, it's because of the nine. Templars, that's why it's Le Neuf Sir. Well, they're not sisters, mate. Well, they were queers actually, with the buffalo man, all that. And Simon de Montfort, so Simon of the Strong Mountains, his, fa his father was Simon de Montfort, and his son was Simon de Montfort as well. The, um, the fourth Earl of Leicester. And um, he was a real butcher. During the Fourth Crusade, from 1202 to 1204, he butchered lots of people in Constantinople, which is Istanbul now. And in, um, he got very famous, notorious for butchering the Qatar people in, the, in southern France. So with this, he opened the two gates for bringing the, uh, the Templars treasure through the east or through the west into Switzerland, into the Montfort. So the strong mountains. So this guy is very, very much related to the uh, foundation of Switzerland and the Templars. So this is why this number here. And if you turn it around, you get 911, 1160. Okay. Yeah. Well, and this also is the temple uh, that gave the um, so Le Neuf Sur, the nine, uh, the nine Templars that gave the Statue of Liberty, which is actually Isis. They gave it to, um, well, we know whom, eh? 
and Mr. Simon of the Strong Mountains, so Simon of Switzerland, he, um, he was a part of the Dominicans as well, you know, he was a real butcher, and this is what they like in Switzerland, butchers, you know, financing wars and killing people all over, like in the Second World War, they finance everything, so the Swiss like butchers, it's the home of the Templars. The biggest criminal organization there ever was. And this is actually what, um, what Hebrews and, um, and uh, Muslims have in common. They were both butchered by the Templars. And it's both Swiss banks who come from the Templars that finance the dictators and that finance Adolf Hitler. So guys, team up. You've got a lot of things in common in the Middle East. This is the enemy. The Templars and Switzerland, their banks, their mercenaries, and Simon of the Strong Mountains. 9-11, they did it. So here is the lodge again on number 116, as in the year 1160, of Simon of the Strong Mountains. And here I took a picture a couple of years ago. Well, we can still see the um, the lodge Voltaire aux Neuf Sœurs, the Nine Sisters. You know, um, giving a link to the uh, to the Nine Templars, the original Nine Templars. Well, these queers probably call themselves sisters, as they uh, abuse of children and all that. You know, with the um, yeah. So it says number 116, you know, with the baffle mare thing. And here, is a, there was a, uh, is one of the um, the pamphlet, the uh, the posters, the Swiss uh, made, you know, uh, Nazi things, racist things by uh, portraying foreigners. In this one, as black crows. Well, picking into the clean Switzerland, the strong mountains of Simon of the Strong Mountains, eh? And we already saw that they portrayed the foreigners as black sheep, as rats, as snakes, as um, well, a lot of other things. It's really horrible. This is the uh, this is the heart of Nazism. It is. You see, here's the temple again. There. So. These guys are hiding something, eh? They took away the the nine sisters, and the nine sisters were the ones that gave the uh, the Statue of Liberty to the ones on the other side of the dip. And uh, and here we can see how they play people out against each other. That's what they like, the Freemasons and the Swiss, eh? So their banks, their Templar banks, they can gain money on that. This is what they always do. So you guys in the Middle East don't bash your 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 heads in, you know, with each other. Team up against the enemy, the real enemy. And this is the real enemy of both of you, of the Muslims and the Hebrews. So team up, get together and fight the real enemy. These ones here in Switzerland with their banks and their templars. Okay, peace up, eh? Hello, this is the first day in 2012. I wish the whole world a, a revolutionary new year with a lot of justice and peace. And um, it was four days ago on, the, um, on December the 28th, I gave an interview on the Iranian radio about the Swiss uh, history and their evil doings. And I also have a, um, I have elaborated uh, a way to establish peace in the Middle East. And the day after, I got harassed again and terrorized in front of my child by the Swiss police. Well, thank God I was not alone, otherwise they would have made me disappear. Or, the way that, or they would have suicided me as they did with a lot of people. 
They lied things together. They were very aggressive, provocative, um, pushing me around, lying things, um, presenting me as a drunk and a drug addict in front of my child, which I'm of course absolutely not. And uh, so why is it then that the Swiss don't want me to talk on the Iranian radio? And why is it that the Swiss don't want peace in the Middle East? Well, that's quite clear. They earn too much money on it with their Swiss banks, on war, on, on bloodshed, and uh, on, on, on uh, an unstable world. I mean, Switzerland, as I explained in the Pharaoh show already, is the biggest base of the Pharaohs, and the military wing are the Templars, and uh, their financial wing are the Swiss banks and the political wing are the Freemasons. And um, I mean, this is what actually, this is part of my, the program I have. I mean, there's a lot of things that the Hebrew people and the Muslims have in common. I mean, both are terrorized by the Swiss banks, the Hebrews um, in relation to the Holocaust and the Swiss banks. And the Arabs, of course, just all the dictators who are being financed and have the money on Swiss banks. And uh, what these people, what what you have in common as well is you don't, you both are enemies with the pharaohs. Secondly, and the third thing is you were both butchered and massacred and terrorized by the uh, by the Templars, who afterwards went to Switzerland. So look, the pharaoh show. And, um, I mean, the Templars massively butchered Hebrew people in Jerusalem and they did the same thing with the Muslims. So, if you don't understand this very quickly, that there is an en another enemy which is far more bigger, who's trying to play you, so play you peoples out against each other. If you don't understand this very quickly, you will all perish very soon. So, unite against the enemy you have in common. And, uh, yeah. So, anyone can contact me and uh, I know I can do it. Oh, there's a military exercising place, or what, what the hell, you know, WTF. Right. Um, there they are, the Swiss criminals, hey. I want to tell you, I want to talk to you about the, uh, about the killings, the Nazi killings in Germany. They call it the Donor killings, or the Donor murder. Uh, the weapons, suppressed arms, 007, James Bond weapons. Uh, and the explosive, and God knows what more, it all came from Switzerland. And Switzerland made it possible at all, the murders. And it was masterminded in Switzerland, and this is not something new. We all know that Switzerland is not a clean place. So, um, there's a long tradition going on. I mean, um, every day two train loads full with armaments in World War II. They were shipped over, they were train loaded up to uh, Germany, two train loads. All the flak, the AA, it was all Swiss made. It prolonged the war with at least two years. So this is nothing new, the Swiss financing and um, arming Nazis. And if you look at all the, uh, the posters here in Switzerland, they show foreigners here as rats as black sheep, as black uh, cross, everything, even snakes, as they did in Germany. I mean, they show their fellow humans like all sort of dangerous animals like. Uh, then we know this is the tip of the iceberg and there are more things going on. Well, there are, these are the other things that are going on. So why does anybody do anything against it? A military intervention should be the only thing, is the only solution to stop these criminals. You know, and they're so they're, they're such a coward. They always have the Germans do it for them. You know, as like here. 
Oh, bloody. <laughs> Look, bloody horse here. They always have the Germans do it for them, you know. And, um, yeah, nosy they are. They always want to hear everything. I thought it was the military police or something. Yeah, so this time too, the donor murders. Uh, a donor is a sort of an oriental Turkish uh, kebab sandwich with some meat and salad and sauce in it. The Germans love to eat it, but they don't like the people who sell it. Yeah. So the donor murders were made in Switzerland. It was, it was financed, it was uh, masterminded in Switzerland. Also, hör gut zu, die Dönermörder, die sind in der Schweiz äh, erdacht und äh, rausgefunden worden und befehligt worden. Ne? Äh, die Waffen, die kamen alle aus der Schweiz. Ne? 007, geschalldämpfte Waffen, Explosiven. Und das ist nichts Neues, dass äh, die Schweizer die Nazis äh, mit äh, Waffen beliefern. Der ganze Zweite Weltkrieg. Ja, Bürle, Örlikon, das war alles ja aus der Schweiz. Ne? So. So, please, somebody do something, right? Stop these Swiss criminals, murderers. And I hope some Turkish authorities, they will uh, contact me because I've got solid proofs, mate. Please, Turkish authorities, please contact me because I do have solid proofs. Yeah. Okay, that's all for now. Show you the military place here. Yeah. It's all over. It's all military places. And the police too, they're training here too. Well, they are an army inside nowadays, you know, they're there to hurt people. You know, we can see that with the Occupy movement. And uh, they are not Europeans, though they look white or American. They're pure pharaohs. They're not like us. They're an army within against us. And um, like, you know, like if you were American, like, you know, or European, you find yourselves, you know, against cops from like from all other other nations and the cops from all other nations, they get much better along than, than you and a cop from your country. You see what I'm getting at? Okay, well. NWO, eh? Yeah, one more small thing. Switzerland is the center of Nazism with their Templars. It always has been and it always will be. And now, because they're very successful in politics with their SVP Nazi party, that they are doing like conventions and, you know, um, giving lessons to all the other countries how to do it how to crush foreigners, you know, like in a legal way and, you know, they are, this is the way they do it here. And uh, they're like missionaries. And they're so coward, they always have the others like do it for them, a military police, look at the fuckers, you know, look. Yeah, come on. The Swiss Nazi police, they're all bloody Nazis.
Soldier boys, you're gonna lose the next fucking war. You Swiss. You Swiss criminal. You're gonna lose it. So these are the Swiss mercenaries. You know, they're training like mad, you know. What are they training for? Right? So this is Switzerland. Every village has a, um, a shooting range. Shut up. So here they're shooting here. There. And these are the, uh, the targets. There are the targets there. So every village has a shooting range. And they're also shooting there. It's just the next village. It's unbelievable. And every man, just before a, a couple of minutes, yeah, look, yeah. It's probably like a, uh, like a 308, the old, it's almost like a 308. Winchester and they're shooting with a two every man has a 223 Remington fully automatic assault rifle at home and at the moment They are preparing something they're shooting like mad There's no other country in the whole world Where they have this Here look there's even somebody like running next to it. It's unbelievable. They don't even stop. <laughs> they don't even stop, you see? Look. They don't even stop. Where is she? What happened? Yeah. They don't even stop. Yeah. So every man has this fully automatic assault rifle with a couple of mags at home and this is a um, a mercenary traditions these Swiss they they the mercenaries they terrorized Europe for many for thousands of years actually and at the moment they're preparing something with the banks they know it's going down I mean they're terrorizing the whole world they are you know all the wealthy people that have got the money here every criminal and they are um, well, they know it's going down, you know. So they are preparing something, you know, in case. And if a foreigner, which happened to me, like at um, 2011, um, on May 30th, they, um, they sent an anti-terrorist court and they said, like, like it, was, it was a triumph, you know, they, they, they walked out with a couple of kitchen knives. And every Swiss, you know, they, they're, they're fully armed to the teeth. And a foreigner, you know, he can't even have a kitchen knife. It's unbelievable. It's really t it's unbelievable how these people are evil. I've never seen so much evil in my, in my whole life. And they, the SVP Nazis having all key positions in this society. The police, the Justice Department, you know, all authorities. And um, well, they they are they are terrorizing foreigners. It's unbelievable. They've been terrorizing me and my family for 14 years. But what's important? Look what they are preparing. Every village, even if it's like a 20 20 people village, they have a shooting range. Can you imagine? Not even the cowboys and taxes having this. Look, and there, there's another shooting range. It's just the next village. And look at it, you know, look at it, it's small, they're really small villages, you know, can you imagine? Yeah, and uh, where are the targets? I just saw them before. Uh, yeah, well, the target should be there. I don't, I don't dare to go nearer. But here, you know, here's one village. Yeah, you know, real small. It's called Barry's Wheel. And the next one, you can't even see the village, you know. I mean, where is the village, you know? 
in, in, in bigger towns like Zurich, then they must have they must have like <laughs> like like hundreds of shooting ranges. Uh, this was a heavy one, 308. Or they they call it seven and a half Swiss. It's, it's equivalent to the 308 Winchester or the 762 uh, NATO rifle. Yeah. So they have this Zig with a foldable stock. Uh, I, I wouldn't like to be running there, you know. <laughs> yeah. But among themselves, you know, they have got trust, you know. They're completely, they're so organized. They're so organized. And at the moment, there's a, um, there's a high concentration of, uh, of army movements and of, of shooting. They know it's going down with the banks. Uh, with which they're parasiting on the whole of Europe, sucking it out on America, sucking out the US economy and they are preparing now for the worst because they know it, you know. And I've got threats by the Swiss police, murder threats and by the uh, Swiss justice authorities, you know, the, uh, the justice department that they're gonna finish me off like they did with uh, Wolfgang Umfogel, the guy who sold who sold um, a banking CDs to Germany and he wanted to, to sell it to the IRS, to America, so they killed him. Last year, 2011, 2010, sorry, they murdered. He got suicided. They suicided him in a, inside a Swiss prison in two weeks time only. And uh, well, think about Mr. Odinsov, you know, he had his, um, he revealed a lot of things like last year about the um, about the uh, economical and uh, military and um, political targets which are being taken on by uh, by banksters hitmen so there was uh, i think peter odinsov okay well send in the marines and the SES boys who cares wins you have to send them over here not to bloody Libya there was the one shooting range there and the other one is just there yeah, full of it now I got a bit closer but I have to be very careful because they send in the police very quickly so these are the Swiss mercenaries there they are who terrorized the whole of Europe who are sucking out the economies of many countries here. I must be care very careful here. Very, very careful. Because I have murder threats. Even some kids on a bicycle, it's unbelievable. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to be on a bicycle here. Yeah, and the police told me the next time they're going to arrest me for making my vids, for God's sake. The next time they're going to arrest me, they're going to squeeze, squeeze the trigger. That's what they told me. So, I'm near to a lot of triggers here. Um, so don't believe all the... Um, All the propaganda, you know, like uh, Heidi films and all that, and clean Switzerland, <laughs> because it definitely isn't. You know, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't like to be cycling there. And uh, this is the oldest dictatorship in the world, actually. It is. It is. And they're so organised. They're so organised. It's unbelievable. In the village, the guy, the guy in the car is probably taking a cell phone and calling the guys to give me a hit. There's a target on a hill, he's a foreigner, like, you know, this is why they do it, you know. This is how they, and then they say it's an accident, or they suicide somebody. Yeah. So this is called Matt Staten. Matt, like death in Arabic, or... Uh, checkmate.
mate Matt. Okay, I think I think I have to go now. It's getting dangerous. I see the police coming up. Okay, bye guys. So there we got the grill two times. And uh, no command. And the all seeing eye. Actually the chain has 33 parts. As there are 33 degrees in a Freemasonry temple. Are you all seeing eye? And uh, the world domination here, the Akacha leaves, it's all here. I'll go a bit nearer, but I have to be careful because I got murder threats by the police. Did they see me? seeing eye as the Jal in the Quran he's having only one eye so here's the one eye of the Dajjal and here they torture people to death by O2T especially Muslims 